Welcome, friends, to Manly Monday, a bi-monthly series from yourotherbrothers.com, navigating faith, homosexuality, and masculinity together. My name is Tom. I'm the site editor and co-founder, and I'm glad you're here. Welcome back to Manly Monday. The series continues. And before I move forward, before I dive too deep into this episode, I need to address the glaring thing that is on your screen right now, the big, massive change to the set of Massive Monday. I needed to get it out of the way because I don't want this distracting you the whole time. I will explain the meaning of this before too long. Just hang on. Don't let it distract you. I know it's the only big change to happen on this episode, but the meaning will be explained if you can bear with me for just a few moments. So I had no real concept of what Manly Monday would look like beyond the initial value series. You can go to yourotherbrothers.com slash about if you want to read more about our five values and about who we are if you're finding us for the first time. Welcome. Um, so I knew, I knew Manly Monday, I knew we would open up with a little intro to who we are at Your Other Brothers and talk about the five values that we have, five values displayed by these images behind me on these banners. Um, beyond that though, I was like, is this just gonna be a weekly or a bi-weekly sermon? Is it just gonna be Tom ranting about things? Like what exactly is Manly Monday? And I kind of like where this episode is going because this episode is inspired completely by you, the viewer, the reader, especially you, the commenter, if you comment on our blog. And if you've been commenting on our blog lately, you know exactly where this is going. Today, we're talking about conflict and unity, the concepts of conflict and unity, particularly as people of faith, as followers of Jesus, how do we deal with that? And I'm going to dive into all of that in this episode, completely inspired by recent events on our blog, which stay tuned for State of the Ob later in this episode for more on that. So you would think that in a niche community such as ours, the community I'm referring to as, it goes by lots of names. So I'm just going to throw a bunch out there. You could call it the gay Christian community. You could call it same-sex attracted or SSA Christians, um, people who hold to a side B sexual ethic, a traditional biblical sexual ethic, you'd think that people, all of us in this little sub-community, this sub-niche, sub-niche of the larger niche of Christianity, you'd think that there'd be a lot of unity and a lot of rallying because we're so different, or at least I certainly feel that way, so different from the rest of mainstream Christianity. And, you know, what I've learned over the last several years of being in this community, this sub-community of communities, I realized that there is a phenomenal amount of dissension and division and arguments and different lines over different things. And it's kind of mind boggling. The more I, the deeper I dive into this community, seeing all the conflicts that develop over, in my opinion, a lot of silly, just irrelevant things. I don't want to denigrate someone else's experience or someone else's thoughts or beliefs, but it just, there's a lot of conflict to go around. And if you're someone like me, it can be extremely disheartening and stressful dealing with said conflict. I don't know about you guys, I am a sweeper under the rug type of person when it comes to conflict. I want to ignore it for as long as possible, pretend it's not there, hope that it just works itself out. I think there's, I think there's a sense of hope in it in the sense that I don't want to ruffle any extra feathers that maybe it'll just iron itself out on its own. Just give it a few days or a few weeks or a few months or a few years. And quite often is the case that doesn't exactly happen. It doesn't exactly turn out that way versus if you said something from the start and you can avoid this long chain of events that leaves a lot of unspoken expectations and a lot of stress to build up in the community and in the relationships. And so I'm curious, first of all, if anyone else out there resonates or if you're someone who attacks conflict head on, how that's worked out for you, there'll be a discussion question here in a second. But whenever I think of conflict, um, one of the first stories that comes to mind is when I was in college, it was the only year, my freshman year, that I lived in a dorm. And it was my first time ever doing so, ever living away from home. And I lived in this dorm, three hours from home. First time I've ever had a roommate that was somebody that wasn't my brother, <laughs> basically. And I was living with this guy, so opposite of me in every single way. Very country, probably a self-described redneck. Uh, had the deep southern drawl here in South Georgia. And um, yeah, just completely different personalities and vibes and one of the things he did among many things because he also had a sailor's mouth and he smoked and he did all these other <laughs> all these other things that I didn't do or act like um, something simple that he did that just really bothered me is that he would leave our dorm room door completely wide open 
And it's like, it was a Christian school. And it's like, did I really think someone was going to go into my room and like steal my laptop or, or mess things around? Not really, but it's just one of those common sense courtesy things. Like you leave the room, you certainly close the door behind you, but we have keys for a reason. Like let's lock the door maybe on our way out. But instead of addressing that head on with him, because this happened a few times before I finally was like, okay, I need to address this in some way. I did it in about as the most passive aggressive way that I could, which thankfully this was before Facebook. I think Facebook wasn't quite a thing. Otherwise I might've done it on Facebook and made it even more passive aggressive. Um, But the most passive thing I could have done was leave him a note, basically. I didn't want to deal with it verbally with him. So I left him a note. I think I left it on his desk before I maybe went home for a weekend or something. So I wouldn't have to deal with it for a few days. And I left him a note that just said, Hey, do you mind just closing the door and locking it on your way out? Thanks buddy. And I literally used the phrase, thanks buddy, even though there is nothing about our relationship that warranted the use of said phrase, calling him my buddy. Cause we were not buddies. Not at all. I don't even remember how, what the fallout of that note was. I mean, I remember him closing the door and this long story or the short story is, is that we actually didn't remain roommates much longer for lots of reasons. I remember that note making the rounds amongst other guys in the dorm. And it was kind of like a little joke, like, oh, thanks buddy. And it's still very much something I wrestle with constantly. Conflict does not come easily. I hate it. And it's disheartening too when I see it happening within the church and I see people who are supposed to be on the same side, just talking about the church in general and people who follow Jesus. But then you start getting more and more niche, people who are maybe more on the fringe of the mainstream Christianity. Like we especially should be united and we should be conquering all this conflict that splits us up into even smaller camps. And yet, honestly, if I'm being honest, more often than not, I see more and more conflict splitting us up than drawing us together. And that sucks, like I hate that. I don't know what the solution is comprehensively on a large scale, but Conflict is a hard one, and even on our blog recently, we've experienced that and in the comments and trying to figure out how to respond and how to get this ship all, how to get everybody in the ship going the same direction despite com- coming from different parts of the country and different backgrounds and different generations, different nationalities, and it's tough. Getting unity, getting unity on any front is tough, but especially, I feel, in these matters of faith and sexuality. With the blog, and I mean, obviously in real life, I kind of want to just look everybody in the eye and like give them a good shake and just be like, okay, we have these nitpicky, maybe they're not nitpicky, maybe they're bigger than I make them out to be, but we have disagreements on things. If our common goal, if our common foundation is Jesus and loving him and loving others, why can't we just let all the other things fall? Why do we have to be so fixated on these little nitpicky things or these things that draw super passionate responses? And learning to disagree well, that's the challenge and that's the call that I put out to everybody at Your Other Brothers and everyone who comments is like, we can have disagreements and we will and we have had disagreements, but there have been plenty of times on our our post that we've been able to disagree well. And I like to incorporate what they call the sandwich strategy. The sandwich strategy is a great one. Finding some common ground, finding something that you can relate with the other person in, something supportive, something to encourage that person then introducing something constructive, something that maybe you part ways on, but then also leaving the conversation with something supportive and something redemptive. So that there again, you're leaving on common ground instead of just, and I'm guilty of this too. So this is me telling myself this, instead of lopping off those encouraging supportive pieces, we just dive straight into the meat of why we disagree and what we disagree on. So it's a challenge for myself as, as well as a challenge to all of you that if you see something on our site, if you have an agree- disagreement about a post or about a podcast or about anything that someone else says in the comments, try incorporating, let's aim rather, let's aim for a sandwich strategy of finding support, finding common ground before we dive into what irks us or what parts weighs with us. And then let's leave on common ground as well because at the end of the day, this community is a beautiful one. I love being a part of it. It's a great group of guys, very supportive, very diverse. And that's the beauty in this community is that it is so diverse. And there are going to be differing viewpoints and different theologies, different ways of handling things and saying things. At the end of the day, though, let's unite on our common ground, on Jesus, on loving each other, on loving others, and disagreeing well. So our scripture for this episode, normally we've, in the last few episodes, we've done one, maybe two verses of the scripture. But honestly, I see four verses here that I think make sense to read the whole thing, the whole passage. It all just makes sense. And I actually didn't intend to continue from last time, because last time I read from Philippians, And this continues actually in Philippians, Philippians 2, and it's the first four verses, one through four. 
It reads, so if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count yourselves more significant than yourselves. Count others, rather, more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. So that's my challenge for everyone, to look out for someone else, get to know their perspective, see where they're coming from. Ask questions where necessary, but let's learn to disagree well, both in internet land, on the website, and in real life. Let's apply that. So my question for everyone watching today is how do you deal with conflict? Are you a person that sweeps it under the rug like me? Are you someone that ha crashes into it head on? Does it depend on the situation? And specifically on matters of theology and sexuality and just how to navigate these waters. How do you deal with conflict? Someone with an opposing viewpoint or a similar one, but tweaked a little different way. How do you handle that? I'm curious in success stories and maybe some not so successful stories about how you've handled these conflicts. Big into stories here on Manly Monday and at Your Other Brothers. So please leave us a comment. Go to yourotherbrothers.com slash video and find this Manly Monday episode. Leave a comment if you're watching on YouTube. You can also comment on our YouTube video below. And I'd love to hear these stories of conflict resolution and unity, particularly within this body of Christ, the church, Christianity, and all the different sub-communities that go with it. I'd love to learn from your methods and how you've handled it in the past. All right, and it's now time for the State of the Yob. And this is a great episode for the State of the Yob because we had a lot going on on our website as aforementioned. Let me start off with a couple of our most recent blog posts. Marshall wrote a post called The Painful Path to Restore Friendship. And he talks about this path that he's taken with this friend, this long and winding path of grieving a friend's death and dealing with the fallout between Marshall, an emotional person, and an alpha male friend, maybe less emotional or less in touch with said emotions. And it's a great finisher to this series. Um, if you've ever struggled with a painful friendship and reconciliation, check out Marshall's post. Another great post on friendship from Matt. He wrote one called If Dating Threatens This Friendship. And again, we've all, I think a lot of us have been there. I don't want to say we've all been there. To some extent, we've all been there, I would feel. That we've had a friend start to date or start to have feelings for somebody, and that's going to interfere on your friend time with said friend. And so this is a great post that starts that process of how do you deal with that disconnect with another friend. So check out Matt's post. I always love when Matt posts on our site. He's got a great spirit and a great perspective, very unique way of telling his stories. And so then, lastly, we have a couple blog posts that have been far and away some of our most heated and most commented posts we've ever had on our site in two and a half years of Your Other Brothers. And they're from good old Dean, our most faithful, consistent blogger. Um, his first post was called Why I Want to Be LGBT. And then he actually wrote a follow-up to that post in light of all of the conversations and controversies and arguments that followed. And it was just a follow-up. Why I want to be LGBT, a follow-up. And they're some of my favorite posts. They're really, I mean, I'm just going to speak <laughs> practically and from my perspective, they're really not that controversial. Like I read those posts and I didn't think anything of it, just like he, he didn't think anything of it either, which is what he mentioned in his follow-up. Um, that there are just a couple posts that say, you know what, the LGBT community do a lot of things well. They care for their own, a lot of belonging, a lot of empathy. And this whole like middle ground that we people of faith are in, we have same-sex attractions or we might even identify as gay, but the LGBT community, they seem like different communities and can there be any crossover? Um, and what happens when you resonate and you connect more with the LGBT community than typical church Christianity community? And so it's just kind of as Dean as a person in ministry is just stating kind of what's obvious is that, you know, there are things that are in common with both. And maybe sometimes, maybe most times there's more resonating with the LGBT community than the church community. Needless to say, there's been a lot of debate on whether Christians, whether people of faith should identify with the LGBT community, identify as gay even, and just a lot of passionate, spirited thoughts on it. And everyone draws their lines at different places. We did a podcast on labels. We have a frequently asked question on our site about labels. And ultimately, there are people on our site who are gonna be more comfortable identifying as gay. There are more people on our site that are gonna be identifying, comfortable identifying as SSA or same-sex attracted. And so in the spirit of camaraderie, in the spirit of unity, our goal at Your Other Brothers is to lay those labels down because we're never all gonna agree on the right label. 
And it might mean different things to different people and words carry meaning and loaded thoughts and feelings. And so my goal, my hope with this Manly Monday and moving forward on our site is like, can we, for the moment, like we can have spirited discussion and about appropriateness of labels and word choice with different people and all of that. That's great conversation. But at the end of the day, I'm calling everyone, I'm calling myself to rally around a common goal and a common figure. And let's just follow Jesus together. Let's love people together. Love people inside of this community and out as well. Because I think at the end of the day, if we can do both of those things, loving Jesus and loving others, I think the rest will work itself out. I Honestly, I believe that with all my heart. If you want to add to the discussion <laughs> by disagreeing well or agreeing well, you can go to yourotherbrothers.com slash blog. You can find those posts as well as all the other ones. We have other posts too. You can, you know, comment on a less controversial one. That would also work. Over on podcast night, we did not have a new podcast this week. We're about delayed for a week, and I'll explain why. If you want to go back and listen to our coming out publicly episode, though, episode 36, yourotherbrothers.com slash podcast. Stay tuned later this week where we will have a special retreat episode of the Yobcast. And I'm really excited about it because we had our very first ever Yobbers retreat, all the guys who support us financially. We gathered a bunch of them together in the mountains of North Carolina. Had an amazing time. We separated into tribes based on our five values. I was in the Brotherhood tribe. It was a fantastic weekend together. We're going to have an awesome podcast. Stay tuned for more blog posts as well. Coming this week, we're also going to have a conversation post with some of our authors that were there at the retreat talking all about what we took away from that weekend together. So it's going to be a fun couple weeks talking about retreat stuff and not LGBT labeling controversies. I'm excited. Over in the mailbag, feel free anytime to shoot us an email, mainly Monday at yourotherbrothers.com. Um, no, no new mail to report, but I did need to give an update on our mug. Um, everything looks good on this front, as you can see. Got our nice little logo there. Um, have some issues though now on the back side. It did not survive the, the most recent wash um, that we had. It's now Eventh Event Sparrow finds a hoe, which I'm wondering, yeah, if maybe there's like a hidden message, maybe more letters will fall off and there's going to be some sort of hidden message that emerges. But this is the latest update in our mug story. So I will keep you updated if more changes happen to the mug. But I'm drinking some mango tea this morning and it's great. I'm off to a great start, but it's, uh, it's just interesting. Yeah. By the end of Manly Monday, whenever we reach our finale, this could just be a plain white mug. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. If you want to send us some mail, we have a P.O. Box. You're the Brothers, P.O. Box 843, Asheville, North Carolina, 28802. Um, I've seen in the comments and lately videos that someone may be sending us some peanut butter to try, sending me some peanut butter to try on the air, on this show. So I hope that happens. I would love to try some peanut butter. If you want to send me peanut butter or send me anything, anything at all, shoot us something. Shoot us a card, shoot us a letter, shoot us a gift. We'd love to present it on the air. We'd love all of our gifts, amazing things. Thanks, supporters, for all that you do. We love you guys. I love you guys so much. And that's going to do it for this week of Manly Monday. Again, leave us a comment below or on our site. Be sure to like this video. Subscribe to our channel. You can also turn on notifications anytime a video is uploaded. We have our podcast. That also gets uploaded here. You can subscribe to that on iTunes. Rate and review us. All that good stuff. Thank you guys for supporting us. I really appreciate y'all. So for all your other brothers, this is Tom reminding you to speak meekly, chase madly, and be manly. Everywhere in between. Disagree well. <laughs>